Hello everyone, welcome to Get Ready and Get Weird. I am Marcella, I am so happy that you're here. Today we are talking about cicadas. My brilliant friend Emily in Kansas suggested this and I thought it was a perfect suggestion for the time of year that it is, summer. To me, cicadas scream summer, literally. Literally. Could they be any louder? But we will talk about that vocalization in the meat and potatoes portion of this video. But thank you, Emily, for suggesting it. I thought it was a great suggestion and I'm glad that you thought of it. My eye makeup is inspired by the green and brownish cicadas. There are tons of different colored cicadas, but my favorite color is green, so I rolled with that. If you are new to this channel, thank you for clicking. This is Get Ready and Get Weird, where I get ready while I tell you about something weird. The weird thing is normally an animal, a bug, an amphibian, any kind of creepy crawly, an arachnid. I'm also open to plant suggestions, geological suggestions, pretty much any natural phenomena, I'm into it. Send me your suggestions, I'm always open to more. I do have a bit of a list, so it may not be my next video, but I'll get to it. <laughs> I'm so glad that you're here. I'm excited to share with you all the information I learned about cicadas. If you are interested in what I put on my face, it will be in the description box below, as well as any articles that I used. Today I used one National Geographic article because it was a good article and it told me all the things I wanted to know. So check that out, ask any questions in the comments. So let's talk about cicadas. <laughs> All right, here I am with my clean face. I am excited to talk about cicadas. There are over 3,000 different species of cicadas in the world. And those species are divided into two categories. And the categories are annual and then periodical. Annual cicadas come to the surface out of their burrows every single year annually so you will see those cicadas if they are in your area where you live every single year and you might not see them but you'll probably hear them which we'll talk about later periodical cicadas come out once every decade or two so they stay in the ground for a longer period of time so before I go deep into what the differences between the two different kinds of cicadas are, I wanted to talk about the similarities because they do share a similar life cycle. The timing of the life cycle is just a bit different. So let's talk about the life cycle of a cicada. A cicada starts as an egg, there's three phases. So it starts as an egg, and then it is a nymph after it hatches, and it is a nymph until it reaches adulthood. So, a female, an adult female cicada lays, it can lay over 400 eggs at a time. It spreads the um, eggs across dozens of different places. So it lays over 400 eggs in dozens of little places like twigs and branches is where they lay their eggs like on the ground but on little twigs and branches like on under some brush the baby cicadas hatch after six to ten weeks and right when they hatch they are a nymph and they then burrow into the ground and they drink, they like get the um, moisture from the roots underground. After the nymph gets underground and drinks from the roots, it will be burrowed under the ground until it reaches adulthood. 
Once it reaches adulthood, it will molt off its skin, which you've probably seen their skins or their exoskeletons around, I have at least, in the summer. And they are kind of like brown colored, the exoskeletons are, and they can kind of be creepy looking, depending on your aesthetic. They can kind of be creepy looking because they can kind of still be holding on to a branch, like a piece of bark or something, and it just looks creepy because they have big eyes and they kind of look like aliens, and I get it. I'm not really creeped out by them, but I totally get why they look a little, a little bit creepy. So once they molt their shells, they come to the surface to lay their eggs. Then we're back at the beginning where the adult female cicada can lay 400 eggs in dozens of different places. The adults die off four to six weeks after coming to the surface. Why did I just smile after I talked about them dying off? I don't know, it just happened naturally. I do wanna note that I got this, most all of the information for this video from a National Geographic article and it is linked in the description box below. Let's move on to some fun facts about cicadas before we talk about some of the specific differences between the two categories. Before we get into that, I think I'm gonna to try to do a green and brown eye look for to match a cicada. Okay, now let's talk about some fun facts. So they have been viewed as symbols of rebirth and power in many cultures over centuries, a long time. Early Chinese folklore held these bugs in high regard and they even used them as like a symbol of what a leader should be. And in the seventh century, cicada motifs were actually integrated into different like noble imperial clothing. So cicadas have been interesting to people long before they were interesting to you and I. Put that in your back pocket. Another interesting fact is that the cicadas, each brood of them, which is like the, the group of them, are kind of synchronized, but scientists don't quite understand why they come up, why they come out and emerge when they do and how they know when to emerge all together. So they do come up when temperatures and the time of the year is just right for mating and laying eggs. But scientists are wondering for the, for the periodical ones that only come up once a decade or once every two decades, why and how do they know? It's very odd. It's an odd behavior about cicadas. And one theory is that it actually is to avoid predators. I mean, seems like a good theory to me. <laughs> Another thing that cicadas are definitely known for is their vocalizations. You've probably heard their vocalizations. I know that I certainly have in the summers of childhood. It's like a staple in my memory of being outside and hearing the cicadas like screech, they're like, are we, are we, are we, are we, and it's like a chorus of cicadas just making the loudest noise. So those vocalizations, <laughs> I can't believe I just gave you an example. <laughs> those vocalizations are, they sound the same to us, you know, they just sound loud and yelly to us. They can be distinct for attracting a mate or for kind of sounding an alarm, like danger, alert, alert, which to me, they always sound like alert, alert, loud and proud. And the sound is made by males using membranes on their abdomen. They vibrate them and that 
is the sound of summer, people. To a bug lover, at least. A bug lover like me. Ooh, I forgot to tell you. So, I already had this idea from my friend Emily to do cicadas as a topic in the Get Ready and Get Weird series. And then, I was looking at bugs yesterday. So I like to look at the bugs outside on my patio and normally it's just like ants crawling along, but my dog started barking at one specific spot. And normally she does that if there's an abnormally large bug. And so I went to go check it out and I saw this little like wiggly butt coming out of the ground and it kind of, it was yellow and black, which gives me like you know, the alarm bells of, ah, it could sting me. So I'm just watching it and it's like digging a hole, running into the hole and then backing its butt back out. I'm like, that's so weird. And Bozzy's barking at it. And I'm like, that's so, that's such an interesting thing. So it finally comes out enough for me to see it. And it's like this size, like this big, like the size of my pinky to the second knuckle. And it has a yellow and black butt and big wings and it's pretty like big it looks like that as big as my pinky and i take a picture and i send it to my friends who know things about bugs and then i do my own research because they weren't responding no, no offense taken everybody so i look it up and it is actually a cicada killer wasp i was like look it's just a sign that i have to talk about cicadas anyway that was a big side note. All right, so now let's talk about the difference between the annual cicadas and the periodical cicadas. Annual cicadas will emerge from the ground, from their burrows every single year, as you would assume by the name annual. And this emergence happens in the summer as I said, you know, it sounds like summer to me, and it does. It happens in the summer in North America. These cicadas are found around the world. So annual cicadas can be found in many places. Another thing I forgot to mention about annual cicadas is that they live for three to five years normally, and then they die off after they emerge. Now, periodical cicadas live 13 to 17 years, which I thought was honestly impressive. That's a pretty long life cycle for an insect. Something that was a little bit confusing for me when I was researching this is that yes, a brood of periodical cicadas will only emerge once every like 13 to 17 years, but there may be multiple broods of them in a specific area. So you may see a periodical cicada emerging every single year. Does that make sense? So while this brood is only going to emerge in 2000 and 2017, there may be a brood that is also, that is going, a different brood that is going to emerge in 1999 and 2016. So in that case, we would have seen a brood emerge in 2016 and a brood emerge in 2017. They could both be periodical cicadas, but they were from different broods. That was a little bit confusing for me, but I think it's, um, I think that it makes sense still that way, explaining it that way. These periodical cicadas are unique to North America. So represent North America, what, what? I do want to specify something that I learned. Cicadas and locusts are different. Maybe I'll cover locusts sometime, but we're not talking about them today. Locusts can cause devastation when 
there's what's called a plague. But cicadas do not cause a cause destruction the same way that locusts do. But I do know that many people fear that. They fear, you know, oh, they're gonna eat all the crops. But that's just not, that's not what a cicada is all about. Cicadas do not eat vegetation. As I mentioned, the nymphs, when they burrow and um, as they are burrowed, they drink sap from leaves, the adults drink sap from leaves and the nymphs drink from the roots of plants. So they aren't gonna eat the leaves and vegetation. And it's important to know that that means that trees aren't gonna die from large groups of cicadas. The, the article that, the National Geographic article that I read did mention that young trees in the areas that a plague of cicadas or a brood of cicadas I'll have to look up what a group of them is called once they're swarming. Maybe it's a swarm. But a large group of cicadas could possibly, the them drinking the sap and from the roots could possibly damage a, like a young tree. Oh, I just really um, messed up that eyebrow. Ooh, yo, yo, Yeeks. So if there's a young tree, it could suffer and maybe not make it through a large cicada summer, but an adult tree or mature plants are going to be just fine. They, a plague of cicadas will not devastate farmland. They will not devastate a forest or wherever, whatever, you're worried about they it's just not it's not um part of their process since they aren't eating the leaves off of them All right, so that is getting ready and getting weird, talking about cicadas. Thank you, Emily, my brilliant friend, Emily in Kansas, for suggesting covering cicadas. I thought it was perfect for the time of year that it is, and also right up my alley with being a little bit weird, you know, the way that they're, with their alien eyes, how they, they kind of have a creepy look to them, and so a lot of people are weirded out by them, but I love to shed light on the little weirdos in the world. <laughs> so thank you, Emily. I do appreciate this suggestion, and I loved learning about them. We talked about the fact that there's over 3,000 different species, and they are separated into annual and periodical bugs. Annual and periodical categories? bugs, categories of bugs. And then we just kind of covered, you know, the difference between the categories, their life cycle, and the fact that these critters will not eat your crops. They're just not going to damp, they're not going to cause mass devastation. So don't worry about that. Sing along with them. I'm not giving you another example of how they sound. I just thought about it and decided it's probably Y'all already have some video evidence of that. Anyway, thank you again. Thank you for clicking to watch. Please, if you liked this video, like it. Subscribe to my channel if you enjoy these kind of videos. And share this video with your friends and family, any kiddos that would be interested in learning more about the weird things in this world. Thank you for watching and stay weird.